Hello world. Now welcome back. Now we're going to just jump back to functions here. So, in case you haven't been practicing with functions or the rules of scope, I'm just going to give you a, a quick, quick rehash of how this works. So first, I want to make a function here. Let me just make it void. I'm going to call it example, because that's what I want the name of my function to be, and it takes no parameters here. Okay. Now let's just say. Or yeah, actually I do want it to take a parameter. I'm sorry. So I had int x. So it takes an integer value here. And let's just say x is going to equal x plus 3. And then we're going to return x here. Okay. Now, let me make this a little smaller here. Okay, so let's say we had, uh, oh, oops, I can't return. See, look at this squiggly here, see that? This piece here has to match the return type. Okay. All right, so let me say I made a variable down here called y, and that was equal to 2. Then I'm going to output um, example. Let me just make this one 50. So you can see the name of the function here. Example of y. And uh, I need the output operator here. Okay. I'm going to run this here. We output we output that here. Now, if I were to, uh, if I were to also output y here, uh, y is still going to equal two here. So in this case, I output the the return value here, because remember, when you use functions here, it's always going to use the return value here, and uh, it's going to print off just the value of y here. So let me say, let's say I change this to x here. So this time I'm passing in the same variable to here to here. Well guess what, it's, these are still two di different variables here. Oh yeah, and I need an x here. I need to change this to x too, because y didn't exist. Okay, we can see that here, <coughs> that y is equal to 2 here. Or that x is equal to 2. But even though we have x, x plus 3 here. So what happens here, I pass in the value of x here. In this case, it's 2. Now I say that x is going to equal 2 plus 3, which is going to be 5, and we're going to return the 5 here. But notice that when we output the value here, that these, this x here, is a completely different variable than this x here because they're in two different scopes here. So even though x was in incremented by 3 here, it still has the same value. It still has the same value down here because these are completely different scopes here. Now, if you haven't watched the scope videos, I recommend that you do that so you can understand what's going on here. But that's just that's just a quick rehash here. Now, let's say you did want to change this variable here. Okay. Let's say you did want to use a function that changes the value of variables or multiple variables here. Well, I'm going to show you a quick alternative way that we can do this here. And see how I initialize this x down here? And I also initialized in a variable up here as a parameter. Well, let's say I delete those here. What we can do, oh, oh, a short way around this, is using a global variable here. Now, this is the global scope here. Like when I, because we, we notice that the main function is in this global portion here. This function here is in this global portion here. Now we have a variable in the global, in the global scope here. What does this global variable do? That means this variable exists with every single function. That's, that, that's here. So no matter how many functions I can use here, I can just change the value of x here. So in this case, let's say I plug in 2 here. Then I'm going to output x. Actually, uh, there's going to be an error there. I can plug in x here. 
Um, no, I can't. Oops. Actually, let's just delete that here. Basically, it's just going to take the value of x and add 3 to it. I mean, this function is global here, so I can... I can use it here. It was equal to 2 here, now it's equal to 5. I implemented it in this scope here, but I also outputted it in this scope here because it's a global variable here. It exists within all scopes because this is the global portion here. Now I can't call functions here. If I tried to say, if I tried using like while x is greater than, while well, x is less than uh, 10 or 20. Now this will be an issue here. Because I can't call, I can't do certain things. Like I can't execute um, commands here. I, I can make things all day here. So we can make functions, we can make variables. And we'll go over what we can do in the global scope in the next couple of tutorials here because we're going to be using the global scope to make our things here. So basically so far, until we've gotten up to functions here, before we uh, have gotten to functions here, we've been using everything inside the, the main function here. We've been making our variables here, we've been executing everything inside the main function here. Now we started to go a little bit global here by making functions here. Now we can also use global variables here. Now, however, even though this is a way we can change values of variables here, let's say I had a variable y here. Let's say y is equal to 3. And um, I can set y equal to example. So now I have a relationship here with this value of x and y. Because it's going to return the x value here. And I can say... <clears throat> now I can set y equal to... I thought something wasn't right. Okay. Now I can set y equal to 5. Because I set y equal to the example here. Well, the example depends on the value of x here. Like if I made this 9 here, and I run it, y would equal 12. So that's kind of a... This is kind of a link here. That we, This is just a small example that we can use here. You can get really creative with this by using global variables here. But global variables are frowned upon there's a better way to do this here instead of using global variables here. I didn't want to cover too much on global variables because there, there are better ways to do this here. Because if you started making all your variables global here, you're basically <coughs> it's kinda like um taking all the files in their filing cabinet, dumping them all over the dumping them all over the table and uh, everything's there. It's everything's accessible but it's gonna be really hard to find certain things. Or they're, if they're all in folders and files here, you can search a different file, and then you would be able to search for a specific item much faster than if you just dumped all the files all over the place. So we, we want to try to, the practice is to try to keep our variables as local as possible here. And we want to try to keep a lot of things out of the main function, the main body, as possible by using functions and calling functions. But, um... Just, just to keep in mind that global variables are bad, and then in the next tutorial, or maybe in the next two tutorials, we'll be going over pointers. And that's going to be our ticket into changing the value of variables here. So that's what we have on variables here. That's the, that's the review on functions here. And the, hopefully this is just a little bit of review on scope. Because scope's going to be... <coughs> we're going to have to know the rules of scope and exactly how it works. But I haven't explained everything about scope yet, so it would be impossible to know everything about scope if you haven't, if you only watched up to this this point in the videos here. Now I might I might have left a couple things out, even if if they were complete. But <clears throat> um, I'm just trying to go over the basics here. If you really want to know the entire language of C++, um, I would recommend watch all these video tutorials here, then read a book, so the book's a lot easier to. Understand, of course, the book will tell you things that I didn't tell you. But so that's it. So let's let's just move on here. And um, 
Here's global variables if you want them. You can make as many as you'd like. And, um, and I can also use Y here. But this Y here is always going to take the member of the uh, with the rules of scope here. It's going to use the it's going to set this Y equal because there's two different variables named Y here. And when I said Y is equal to the example here, it's always going to use the most local scope here. In this case, this Y here is more local than this one here because this is global. This is the as global as you're going to get. That's the very base here. So if you haven't watched the uh, rules of scope, go ahead and do so. Otherwise, let's move on to the next lesson.